Hello YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita. Welcome, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you all so much for the love and the continued support of my channel. So today's video, you guys, this is gonna be a fun one. We are going to get into Masterpiece Fragrances. Now for the longest, I've wanted to do this video with the, you know, my take on a masterpiece or my opinion on what a masterpiece is. However, I wanted to switch it up a little bit because it's so hard for me just to decide, okay, this is a masterpiece. Uh, so I asked you guys, <laughs> when I tell you, you are my people, you are my people. So this video is going to take into account my entire fragrance family. YouTube and Instagram, I asked what are three fragrances that you all consider to be masterpiece fragrances. Some of these were actually surprises. So these were the top 10, you know, just looking at all of the responses, these were overwhelmingly that you saw a lot. So without further ado, you guys, let's just jump right into today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna start this one out with fragrances that I do not own. Now these first three, I have actually either owned them <laughs> or I have at least, you know, tried them or sampled them at some point in the past. So the first fragrance is going to be Peregrina. Peregrina, I've owned, okay? I've talked about it on my channel um, in uh, several videos. And that is the only fragrance why I feel like we really had a love-hate relationship. When I first sampled Peregrina, free dabber from Lucky Scent, okay? So that says it all. I thought I loved this fragrance. Got the full bottle and it was a like, like it was a like, okay? <laughs> and it's like every time I went to wear it, it was some, okay, some days I will feel like it's giving me old lady with all this gardenia and all this white floral going on in here with the rolls. It just felt very mature. Other times it was like sweet caramel, you know, gourmandish perfection. Other days it was like amber city, like too much amber to some, like it was just something off. And eventually I just decluttered it because I could not, we couldn't get on the same page, me and Peregrina, okay? But this came up quite a bit on the list. So Peregrina by Tamin is one that, you know, many consider to be a masterpiece fragrance. Now you guys, Peregrina I feel like is the most hyped for women um, from the Tamin line, but do not sleep on that house. They have some amazing for fragrances, get a discovery set, okay? I need you to make sure you sample Blue Heart, sample Patiala, um, Amber Room. They have some amazing fragrances. So if Peregrine is your only time in experience, I need you to dig a little deeper, okay? Because they have some great scents at that house. So the next one on the list is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mall, okay? From the nose, honey, of Dominique Ropion. I wholeheartedly agree. This is a masterpiece fragrance. I don't own it. Um, I sampled this perfume in the past and this is like a rose, spicy, it's patchouli. It is powerhouse. Like the way that Ooh For Greatness is like, you, you smell that on a test strip probably for a good 30 days before it even begins to fade. Um, it lasts forever. It's a room filler. Portrait of a Lady is beautiful okay massive compliment getter um according to the people that own it that wear it and you just smell like money you smell like somebody very important when you put that on and you walk out the doors and people smell that on you when i wore it when i sampled it i felt like this was when i tell you this was very beginning of my fragrance journey so i was like this smells so good but I don't know if I would be able to pull this off. Like, you know how there's just certain fragrances, you're like, where am I gonna wear this? Um, how often am I gonna wear it? And can I pull it off? It leans just a hair masculine for me. Um, even though it's, you know, a lot of patchouli, a lot of, it, it wore very beautifully. But that is one that I want to revisit. I'm, listen, I am revisiting all of you know, the masterpieces, the greats from when I first smelled them in my journey because I feel like my nose has changed a lot. And I recently, y'all, I recently retried Usat Mood. I just off on a tangent. I need a full bottle. 
<laughs> I never ever thought I'd say that. So when I tell you, revisit the greats, okay? It doesn't matter how you felt about them two years ago. Get your nose back on them. Just get, just, just get a sniff and see if you've, you know, come around, turned around and change your mind about it because you could be missing out on some amazing additions to your collection. Um, Portrait of a Lady, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Not one for everyone, but without a doubt, I must agree, a masterpiece fragrance. Okay, y'all, this next one I owned and decluttered and I never understood why it was so popular, but Ball de Freak, okay? That came up a lot. A Ball de Freak by Barreto is, I'm sure, their most popular fragrance for the house. This is like a citrusy, it's vetiver. For me, it just leaned a little masculine. I don't know if it's just because the way my nose was reacting to the amount of vetiver in it, but it leaned just a little masculine. Like I would love to smell it on a man. It didn't smell bad, but I just wasn't like, you know, I was expecting for the pearly gates, the, the, the skies to open, you know, I'm thinking, and I just didn't get that. But a lot of people do, a lot of people do, because clearly we're discussing it today. It came up a lot. So if you've never smelled it, um, I would say get your nose on it. Don't blind by it. Get your nose on it because you may be blown away by it. You may love it. Uh, it's a citrus, so you may be underwhelmed, which is kind of what I was. So I probably wore it out once. Um, continues to kind of play with it, but yeah, it was just a very fast declutter for me. Like probably within a couple, couple months, three months, I looked at it. I'm not wearing it. I'm not into it. Decluttered it. But it's definitely one um, that people hold in higher regard, especially for the House of Byredo. Okay, so let's get into fragrances that I own. And y'all, of course, of course, of course, Baccarat Rouge was overwhelmingly uh, the number one fragrance that you saw come up. This fragrance is a masterpiece fragrance to me. Not only to me, too many others. It came up the most. And this is the GOAT, okay? It is a very beautiful, classy saffron fragrance, room filling, Siage is on 10, last 24 hours on the skin and clothes. Clothes probably 24 days. You have to wash it out. Um, very sweet, ambery, ambergris. It's um you know, it's got a woody vibe. It is beautiful. It is the most airy, like transparent scent. Um, but it just has, this is like a magical fragrance for me and many others. You may not agree. A lot of people think it's overhyped and I, I just, I don't know about, I don't like that term y'all <laughs> overhyped. It's overhyped when everyone loves it and you don't like it, <laughs> but Let's just call a masterpiece a masterpiece. You don't have to vibe with it, but just because you don't like something doesn't make it overhyped. It just makes it not for you. So let's just be at peace with that and move on. But absolutely overwhelmingly Baccarat Rouge 540 um, from the house of MFK, masterpiece all day, every day. Okay, so this next one is also no shocker. Like, of course, these are no, no shock. Delina and all her sisters, of course, okay? Polarizing is the original, um, but this one is the best one for me. I layer all my Delinas. I wear them, you know, together quite often. But this one, if I could only pick one, it would be the original. She started it all, okay? But that rhubarb, it's just a certain... Uh, she just gives a little something, something that... that has my whole heart. <laughs> this is a very beautiful rose leachy scent. The rhubarb in the opening is it, it's really tart and it gives it a very unique quality. It's um, a little sweet, it's ultra feminine, um, and it is just so, like this is absolutely a masterpiece. I always say one of my top three for life and amazing performance, okay? Amazing. Performance is subjective because some people like, well, I just don't get the longevity with uh, Delina. I don't smell it on me after an hour. Honey, 16 hours later, it is radiating off my skin. 
you don't even have to overspray this and I get all day, all day, all day wear, period. This is when I have to come home and scrub off before I go into, you know, my second sense of the, the night or my sense of the evening. Um, so to me, this one is the best of the Parfums de Marley line. I feel like this is the one that is worth full price point. Some of the others, well, when I say her, I mean Delina and all her sisters. Some of the others, <laughs> oh no. I don't know about full price, but um, this one all day, all day plus tax, plus tip, plus shipping, uh, plus whatever else you need to add, because I'm gonna always have that one in my collection, provided that they still making it and they don't water down this formula. All right. So that's a lot of Lori. I need y'all to stay far away from the house of parfums to Marley. Okay. We don't need y'all coming in there, making no changes to the girl. All right. So this next one, you guys, I was, I was so shocked, pleasantly surprised but shocked that this one was overwhelmingly, like right after Delina and Baccarat. <sighs> Rosina Mato number five, if you don't believe me, check the receipts. It is still in the community post. Um, Wow, you guys, Rosina Mato's number five is stunning, okay? Love it or hate it since. I feel like, these first three that I own that we're talking about are love it or hate it. It's Delina, love or hate. Okay, there's no in between. Baccarat, love or hate. Same with number five. Okay, I'm telling y'all when it's polarizing, that's when it gets good. Okay, so number five is the most sensual musk ever made. Okay, ever created. And it's ambery. It's like this sweet, sugary, ambery. And where this is more of like your ambergris, this is definitely giving more of like that brown, sweet amber. And it's got some spices in there. And that is when it can go left for some people because the way the spices are done, it can give off like a rubbery smell or nuance to some people. I don't get that, but I did when I, my very first spray of this and where it was giving me rubbery opening for like the good, you know, 10 minutes. And then after that, it died off. And I really don't get that at all now. Some people get rubbery throughout the life of the scent. This is not, this is not a safe blind buy, okay? Definitely says it's a blind buy for me, but it was very risky. Fortunately, it worked out, um, but I agree, you guys. Y'all are my people, y'all are my people, y'all are my tribe, I'm telling you. This thing is so beautiful and sexy. The uh, This is a beast, okay? Um, but there is still like this airiness to it, the saffron, the way it's done, and it is just, magical this is the most magical of um you know i will say musks that you will ever experience so if you haven't tried if you're on the fence girl hop on over to sand split and get a decant you don't have to be on the fence make a decision because we need you to try this fragrance today all right so i am shocked that this made it because i knew a lot of y'all loved it but when I say this might have gotten more um, votes in Baccarat, I don't know. I need to add them up. Rosendo Mato, number five, Masterpiece Fragrance. All right, guys. So next up on the list is going to be one that I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. And I agree. <laughs> I agree. Blanche Bet is a Masterpiece Gourmand Fragrance. This is definitely not going to be for everyone. I don't ever, I've never recommended that you blind buy this. I don't really, I'm not you know just just test stuff for yourself don't be out here blind by nothing if you can help it but i say that because this is very electronic like tonic is not gonna be for everyone but i feel like even if you don't like electronic just test it because you never know you never know when you're gonna get a fragrance into your life that kind of pulls you over to the other side this one has converted rose haters it does it every day 24 7. This one, people that are, oh, I'm not into Lectonics. I don't like Lectonics. Head over heels. Blanche Bet is very musky. It is, oh, it's got this touch of, you know, like this dry cacao thing going on. It is white floral, but because it's so milky, it's absolutely not going to come off. It's like this sharp, heady white floral scent, at least to me. Some people get a very uh, prominent tuberose, but I always feel like, you know, and I say, I feel like it is equal parts jasmine tuberose. I don't get that this is very heady tuberose fragrance or that the tuberose is like a hero note or a star. 
very white floral musky. Okay, this is like vanilla musky, um, lectonic, and I feel like in the backdrop is going to be the white floral. So if you have been hearing, cause this is, it's, I feel like this year it really started to pick up some steam finally on um, YouTube and you're seeing it pop up everywhere. Test this one out because it is very hyped right now. Um, and I feel like it's for good reason. This is so beautiful. The sillage on this is so beautiful. People, this leaves a trail. I'm talking about, I have been tracked down. I have been asked many times, what are you wearing? I've been asked to write this down. It's magical. It has so many like notes that are like, what the heck <laughs> is mystical? What is nymphial? Um, so yeah, the notes, you're just not going to know what to expect from this fragrance. You just have to experience it. Get a decan. I think Max Aroma, when I got mine to test it, was like 20 bucks, okay? Test this out because the, the moment this baby hit my skin, I decided it was full bottle worthy and we have been having a love affair ever since. All right, you guys, so the only, the only designer to make this list, Mon Guerlain. And I was actually shocked that so many people was coming with the babe, the, uh, listen, the OG Mongerlon. They didn't, they weren't saying intense. They wasn't mentioning no flankers, Mongerlon. And I must say, I, one of the most beautiful designer fragrances, um, one that I constantly recommend to people when they're just starting to get into fragrances, they don't know where to start, um, Mongerlon because every time I recommend it, they love it. Every time. Like I have yet to recommend this to, you know, a family member or a friend, they get it and they're like, girl, what is this? Um, lavender, very hard to do in women's fragrances, okay? This doesn't lean frugere. It doesn't give a masculine vibe. Whereas they attempted to do, you know, leave and it is, a female frugere. That is literally what it is and it smells like it. And so some people smell leave the original and they say that it leaves masculine. And I must agree that one and uh, the intense to my nose. It, I feel like a man could pull it off quite easily. A man can wear this, but this leans incredibly feminine uh, to me. Okay. It's very sweet, just a beautiful uh, lavender, you know, floral fragrance and it is a stunner. So if you're brand new to, to, you know, the fragrance world, one of the designers that I picked up first when I got really into collecting, and it is still a love to this day, it still has the wow factor. I don't wear it that much, um, but I need to. Uh, I need to because this is beautiful and I absolutely agree with you guys. Mongolon on the list, the only designer to make the list, um, you know, based on what you guys were telling me, but this one, absolutely. Mongerlan, the original by the House of Guerlain. Now this one was a shocker because I thought her sister Ani would be on this list, but it's not, honey. 100 Silent Ways was like every other response that was in people's 100 Silent Ways, 100 Silent Ways, 100 Silent What? Masterpiece? I feel like when this was first released, when I got in a fragrance, you know, when I started to hear about this, some people were like, this is giving designer. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but they just, I guess people expect so much complexity <laughs> when it comes to niche. And that's just not always the case and nor is it necessary. This is the most beautiful, sweet, I mean, toothachingly sweet, uh, white floral, very creamy, uh, very vanillic. That is what you're getting. You do have a beautiful, a uh, peach note or nectarine, I, I can never remember which, um, but it's a fruity floral that if you want compliments, okay, if you don't want it spicy, if you don't want something overly complex, perfect beginner, uh, you know, to niche fragrance. If I'm, if I'm recommending something and someone is very new to niche, you know, they ain't never smell no, ooh, why would I start there? It's gonna, it's gonna shock your nose. Something like this would be perfect, even if you don't like white florals. This is this is the one you, if you were like, oh, I just, I'm not into white florals, give this one a try because you may love it. This doesn't come off as anything sharp 
or heady the like the way that it's sweet and creamy um and you get this peach vibe that is what is taking over in the vanilla um so though a white floral it is very uh very easy to like very easy to wear and men constantly are complimenting me on this when I'm just, you know, at work or I'm out and about. People will stop you and tell you that you smell good when you wear this fragrance. So again, this one is 100 Silent Ways by Nishane. All right, you guys. And so the last one on this list is going to be The Good Girl. <laughs> Spiritus Double A Vanille by Guerlain. Now this is from the Arts Materials line. This is a very like formal, sensual vanilla, okay? So the Guerlain's, they were popping up a lot. You know, you saw a lot of Angelique Noirs. Um, you saw some classics like the Mitsuko. I saw that pop up a couple times. Someone mentioned uh, Shalimar. Um, yeah, a lot of the Guerlain's were popping up, but this one, people, oh, this is like starting to turn almost like a brown purple. Oh, okay. But anyway, so this one I love, like this was my first arts and materials purchase. And though when I first got it, I was like, okay, this is nice, but damn, people make it seem like it's a masterpiece. Honey, it is. <laughs> By the time I gave it like um, a couple wears, I was fully in and fully like in love. And this is one that I feel like if you're a vanilla lover, you, you have got to to test this one out to get your nose on it because it is beautiful it's like this boozy vanilla um and you have some very delicate spices in there it's very very vanilla forward um of course it, it's in the name this one has a little bit of incense um it ambery it's just beautiful okay if you have somewhere really you know dressed up and uh, that's kind of a rule of thumb you don't want to be in a formal event and you you're filling the room wear something that is more scent bubble that's typically how we go about things but it, it's no rules to fragrance do what you want to do but this is perfect for a setting like that where you know y'all are hobnobbing you get in your little circle and y'all are chatting with whoever and everyone in the circle is going to smell this on you but the people, you know, uh, two sections over, they're not gonna smell it. And that's kind of the vibe you wanna give. But this one is perfect, vanilla for date nights. This one is, you know, when, listen, he wants to smell this on you. He wants to smell this on you. So if you're not a fan of incense, um, you don't really like those, you know, benzoin, incense, vanilla, test it first. Don't blind buy it. This was a blind buy for me, but I, it is very hard to disappoint me with a good vanilla, okay? So not a risky one for me, but this one, it takes the cake. I absolutely love it. Not a beast mold. The longevity, I will say, is moderate. Um, but honey, just take a decant and top it off. It's not the end of the world. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. My re-up, okay, because we babysit the rest of this. This should have been gone. Um, but I'm just going to have to, I'm at the point where I'm starting to have to repurchase fragrances. And I'm like... I hate that, <laughs> but some of you just have to. Um, but Spiritui's Doble Vani, Masterpiece Vanilla Fragrance says me and says y'all, okay? So that is our video for today, you guys. If you did not participate, you know, in the poll, in the little questionnaire I sent out, go ahead and drop it below. What are three fragrances that you consider to be masterpiece fragrances? Something that you just would not change a thing, okay? Perfection in your eyes. I'm so super curious to know. So drop me a comment below, let me know. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure notification bell is turned on to all. And last but not least, give the video a big thumbs up as it helps us to grow. It is been real. I love you all, YouTube, and I will catch you guys on the next one.